Okay, so we're sampling a windrow. There are two methods for windrow sampling. They're for different situations, different contexts. This is method B out of the standard. This one, it's derived from the British and European standard, and it's really only applicable to materials that are of known and consistent source, where you have too great a variation in the source of materials, this really doesn't apply. But the process that we're going through is we're assuming that we have a windrow that's been turned with a loader, where we haven't managed to achieve even and consistent mixing. With a loader you just cannot mix as well as you can with a purpose specific windrow turner that runs through and beats all the material up. So we're sampling a windrow, this is the method where we assume that the windrow hasn't been thoroughly homogenised in the process of turning. So the first thing we need is we need our batch recording sheets. We need to check and make sure we've got the right windrow. We need to record onto our batch recording sheet a sampling date using the unique identifier in the windrow. So as when we get results back from the assessment of the samples, we know which windrow they apply to. So in this sampling method, what we're doing is we're cutting into the pile. The assumption is that we're working with a pile that hasn't been thoroughly mixed and homogenized with a windrow turner. It's a pile that's been turned with a loader. And so what we need to do is we need to dig in so we expose the cross-section face which will give us sampling size to be able to sample, take incremental samples from across the profile of the pile. So, yep, and then, and then one more down here. I like to use a trenching shovel for sampling because the quantity of um, each individual increment sample you extract and the number of incremental samples that you need to extract to get a representative sample of a windrow depends on the size of the windrow and the particle size of the materials in there. Obviously, if you've got large particle size materials in a windrow and you're only getting small incremental samples from each sampling site, you're going to tend to avoid the large particles. And so what you're going to end up with is a sample that's not representative of the full range of materials in the pile. So in the Australian standard, we'll put the slide up. So on this windrow, we're assuming that we've got a windrow of 600 cubic metres or thereabouts. So we need a minimum of 13 incremental samples for this windrow. But you can see from the slide the different size of um, the different volume for a windrow and the number of increment samples that you need and also the size of sample you need depending on the particle size grading in the materials. So we've seen the loader take a bite out of this windrow and we've got into at least halfway. What we don't want is we don't want to take material from the outside edge, we don't want to take material from the very base. This material isn't representative of the main mass of the pile. So what we've exposed by exposing the cross-section face here is a sampling site. And we can extract samples from distributed across the face here that if reasonably distributed and not getting a, a larger proportion of them from in the centre than we are from the outside, then effectively what we're doing is we're getting, as best we can, a representative sample of that cross-section area. So with this pile, ground to a nominal 15 mil, 50 mil, sorry, I'm extracting a four litre sample for each increment sample. I'm putting it into my sampling buckets. One of the key things is that everything's got to be clean. There's no point coming out here with dirty materials, dirty spade and risking cross-contamination. You're sampling for a purpose. The purpose is you're sending off the materials to be analysed. You want to be analysing this material. You don't want to be contaminated with the material from other piles. So the beauty of the trenching shovel is I can get a good bite into a pile because I don't have a large wide blade to try to push in. The other thing is that I can reach the pile from a reasonable distance away. The other thing I'll just point out here is so reaching it for a reasonable distance away it means that I don't have to track over the surface that I'm sampling from and risk walking all over it and tracking material from elsewhere onto it. So if we look here, you'll see with the trenching shovel, 
I'm not avoiding getting larger pieces. All right. The smaller the spade, the more likely you are to avoid getting larger pieces and then you don't have a sample that's actually representative of the pile itself. So, oh, so that's one. I'll get four litres from the centre here. And so what I'll end up doing is taking sample from here, 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 here. So effectively I'm getting from the entire cross section area. Now I'll do this on this windrow, probably at three different sampling sites. So in the end, I'll end up with five samples from each site, three sites, 15 samples, each at four litres. I'll end up with a total of about 60 litres of material. You can't just grab a sample from anywhere in the pile and hope it is representative of the pile as a whole. The sample for testing, it needs to be a statistically valid and representative sample of the entire mass of material with incremental samples of a suitable size taken from a large enough number of sampling sites in a manner that avoids bias. These incremental samples are then mixed to form a representative composite sample. Now this is supposed to best represent material of average characteristics for the entire pile. A representative subsample for tests can then be obtained from this composite sample. Again, for this pile with a nominal particle size of up to about 50 millimetres, to conduct the full range of tests on representative materials for each test in the lab, we only need a representative sample of about 20 litres. To send off for testing, I'll keep a duplicate sample of 10 litres here, which means we end up having to cone and quarter to reduce and separate a smaller quantity, a representative quantity from or, or representative subsample of the composite sample. We'll show you that in another episode. But at the moment, I'll keep collecting these. I've got the lids here. I'll cover them over as I walk them around because I don't want windblown material blowing into them and again, risk of cross-contamination. So I'll finish at this site. We'll go down to the next sampling site. We'll end up with our 60 litres and we'll see you next time with the Caney and Cording episode.